this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, let's rejoice and be glad in it. Happy second Sunday to everyone who's watching us on this, our Lord's Day. God has been so good to us and he is worthy of our praise. We bless the Lord and praise him from whom all blessings flow. I'm excited about this Sunday as we prepare to come into the presence of the Lord. But in his presence is the fullness of joy. It's prayer time in the house of prayer. If you'd like to submit a prayer request, the information is right there on your screen you you're more than welcome to call us or email us or you can send a message through our website or on any, any of our social media platforms we say it every Wednesday and we believe it here on the Lord's Day that we believe in unity in the power of prayer and by faith our prayer request turns into praise reports that same information that you're using now to submit a prayer request we love to hear your praise reports if God has been good to you and if the prayers of the right have availed much in your life we'd like to hear from you so if you have a prayer request as of the goodness of the Lord and how the prayers of the saints have worked on your behalf in addition to sending us a prayer request also use that those that same information to give us your praise reports and we, the same way we prayed with you and supplicated with you we'll also shout and praise God for you it's prayer time in the house of prayer let's go to God Father, in the name of Jesus, before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. We acknowledge that this is the day that you've made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord God, that you've kept us from last week until this week. Father, you've been so good to us. You've brought us from a long way. And God, we honor you. We bless you. We magnify you. We thank you. Not just for what you do, but God, we honor you for who you are. You are Jehovah Jireh, the God who is our provider. You are Jehovah Sikinu. God, you are Jehovah Nisi. You are our banner. You are Jehovah Roi. You are our shepherd, God. We love you. We bless your name even on today. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we thank you for the privilege to come before your throne with all thanksgiving, with all love, with all mercy, with all favor, that we can find grace and help in the time of need. Now, Father, we want to thank you because you've been so good to us. In the name of Jesus, God, we come because we realize there's no other help we know. And so we need you on this day to strengthen us, be our present help in the time of trouble, in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we come lifting up every prayer request, every petition before you. Your people stand in need of you. We stand in awe of you because we realize that we've looked to the left and we've looked to the right. We've looked high, we looked low, and there is nobody like you. So God, on this your day, on this Sunday, God, we pray that you would hear our prayers, tend to our supplication. Now, Father, look down on your people, but Father, help us to get it right. For we admit, God, that there are some things in our life that are not like you. There are some ways, some habits, some mindsets, some ideologies, some inclinations, some proclivities, God, that are not conducive to our walk with you. So, God, search our hearts, know our thoughts, try us, God. Not if you find, but when you find anything that's not like you. Lord, take it out and strengthen us where we can be what you want us to be. Lord, have your way even right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, if there was ever a time we need you, God, we need you right now. So God, please hear our prayer in the name of Jesus. Search and research us, God so that we can be the people you want us to be. Nevertheless, God, not our will, but let your will be done. And as we come on this Lord's day to worship you, God, let the words of our mouth, let the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. 
Lord, guide us and keep us. Lord, watch over us, protect us. Let your will and your word be done. God, help us today. Now, God, open your word up unto us. Give us a word for your people that will strengthen, that will change, conquer, convert, challenge, that will cause us to be informed and inspired. We need you for your word, for your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Oh God, have your way today. We need you right now. And God, we thank you in advance for the victory that is going to manifest. And it is so, and it, sh and it cannot be otherwise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, people of God. Welcome to Unity Baytown. It is the church where everybody is somebody. Happy second Sunday to you. Uh, no announcements other than this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Join us for, at, two, at 12 noon actually. Join us at 12 noon for prayer and at Bible study for 7 p.m. Also, this is the second Sunday and on every second Sunday, we want to wish a um, happy anniversary to all weddings who are in March. I can think of two. Actually, um, today, well, actually on the 12th, is uh, Reverend uh, Minister Jason and Sister Dorica Sedino's wedding anniversary. Uh, they were married on the 12th, but today is Sister Dorica's birthday. So I want to wish Sister Dorica a happy birthday and may God bless you with many, many more. Amen. And to any birthdays or any other wedding anniversaries, if today is your birthday, happy birthday to you. Those of you who are celebrating during the week. God bless you. We love you. And we and we pray that God would give you many, many more. Listen, again, we did not, I, did, I apologize that I did not get the information to you, but those of you who are in need as a consequence or you need assistance as a consequence of the storm a few weeks ago where it affected the plumbing in your house, um, Unity would love to uh, be an assistance to you. After service, we're going to give you uh, some numbers where you can contact in order that you might find assistance um, for uh, the needs you have, the plumbing needs in your house. So immediately following worship, uh, they'll be on the social media sites. Uh, those of you who were affected by the winter storm that caused your plumbing to damage your house, we will present some numbers to you after worship that will uh, help you and assist you in getting the help that you need. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Guess what? It's time for the word of God. Hallelujah. I will trust. Let's go old school. In the Lord I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Oh, I am going to watch fight and pray. Come on, sing it with me. I'm going to watch, fight and pray. I'm going to watch, fight and pray. How long? Until I, I die. I, I'm going to watch, Fight and pray. I'm going to watch. Fight and pray. I'm going to watch. Fight and pray. Until I die. 
Oh, I am going to stay on my bended knees. I'm going to stay on my bended knees. Oh, I'm going to stay on my bended knees until I, I die. I, I'm going to stay on my bended knees. I'm going to stay on my bended knees. I'm going to stay on my bend, my bended knees until I, I die. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a word from the Lord today. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me to the Old Testament book of Judges. The Old Testament book of Judges to the officers of our church, to the ministers, to the first lady, to you, my father's children, who are assembled in the virtual house of prayer. To all of our first time guests, thank you for worshiping with us today. If this is your first time worshiping with us, would you please comment in the comment section? Let us know who you are and where you're worshiping from. Uh, if you have a church home, we send our greetings to you and to your church. And we are enjoying having you in worship. However, if you're looking for a church home, we invite you to become a part of this wonderful, welcoming, witnessing, working congregation where everybody is somebody. Judges chapter number four. We are in a series of messages entitled Wonder Women. Um, March is um, Women's History Month, and so we want to give you some female factions of the faith, some wonder women. Uh, Judges chapter number four. When you have it, you can be seated. And uh, if I just had to use a subtopic for our time today, I would talk from this thought. You got beat by a girl. <laughs> you got beat by a girl. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You got beat by a girl. Picture it. A ruthless gang of thugs threatening to take over a city. The police are doing the best they can to capture this group of thugs, this band of criminal misfits. When all else fails, from out of the police, there is an unknown person who single-handedly uses their skills, their sharpness to overcome these criminal minds at the time of commendation and celebration it is discovered that the person to whom the accolades will be awarded are not really who the people thought this person was. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I just gave you a brief description of the 1998 Disney animated classic called Mulan. For in the movie Mulan, the army was only designated to the male gender. But the one person that they did not expect to deliver the empire and the imperial uh, city was somebody of the alternate agenda. Whether you know it or not, my brothers and sisters, the feminine presence can produce some fruitful profit. 
That's what the text is teaching us today in Judges chapter 4. For as we continue to highlight some female factions, Judges chapter 4 gives us somewhat of a history of what is going on throughout the entire book. For in the entire book of Roman, of, of the Judges, I'm sorry, we discover that the people of God have stopped mourning the death of Joshua. There is nobody to take the lead after Joshua is dead and gone. As a consequence, the people of God have now started to do their own thing. These people who were godly in nature have now a generation that is not so godly. And may I stop and pause parenthetically and proclaim that if this generation or the previous godly generation does not implement godly characteristics in the present generation, then we are doomed to present a generation that does not and will not know God. My brothers and sisters, wasn't nothing wrong with how mama raised us in church. That was nothing wrong for how big mama raised mama. As a matter of fact, they wrote a song about it. Want to hear it? Here it goes. Give me that old time religion. It was good enough for mama. Yes, Lord. It was good enough for me. And so here it is, my brothers and sisters. The people of God have now started to serve weird gods, false gods, idol gods, Baals, Asherahs, these gods that are not the real God. As a consequence, God himself now becomes angry because they've literally shaken their finger. They've literally taunted and teased God to see if God is going to do anything about their idol worship. Oh, God does. God gets, God gets so mad with them that he allows their foreign enemies to overtake them and put them in years of captivity, bondage, and slavery. And to that, the people of God don't like being in bondage anymore. It reminds them of Egypt. So much so that they begin to cry out unto the Lord. And the Lord hears their cry and he sends now this book called Judges. He sends some individuals who are specifically born for the purpose of rescuing the people of God out of bondage of the enemies of God. When we get to chapter number four, we discover that there is a faction in this book that is unusual and unlike the other judges in this particular book. So come now, my brothers and sisters, as we tour this text, let it talk to us about this female faction that, 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 that shows us some wonder and some amazement. For as we allow the text to talk to us, my brothers and sisters, we discover some holy hints for, for habitation. For in this text, we discover that this female has been endowed, number one, with excessive assignments. She's been endowed with excessive assignments. My brothers and sisters, let me introduce to some, present to others, but give to all our character for the day. Her name is Deborah. Deborah uh, has many hats that she wears on our preaching, in our preaching, preaching passage for today. We discover that this great woman of God has a lot of hats that she wears. Number one, the first thing that we mention is she is position for ministry or her, her position of ministry. The Bible opens up in verse number four by saying that of all things, she is a prophet. I like this because the prophecy denotes that she is uh, she walks in the prophetic herself. There are other women in the Old Testament who walk in this divine office that is inspired by God to give revelation and declaration, not just of things to come, but of things that are. She has a divine inspiration like her male counterparts to hear directly from the voice of God. She, she is one of the two offices in the Old 
Testament that are operable that will help the people hear the voice of God. The first office is the office of the priest, which was emanated by Aaron. And then after Aaron, or before that, Melchizedek. But after Aaron, now comes the office of the prophet. The priest go to God on behalf of the people. But the prophets counter that by hearing directly from God on behalf of God. So God speaks through the prophet, but God hears from the priest. This particular woman is a prophet of the Lord. She goes before the people of God on behalf of God with a word from God. But not only do we talk about her position of ministry, but her second assignment is her partnership of matrimony. As powerful as she is, as strong as she is, the text says that she has a matrimony or a partnership to a man. No, she is not insecure. And by the text, neither is he. She understands the balance of her ministry, that before she can be a prophet anywhere else, she has to be a partner at home. Before she can help anybody else, she is a helpmeet of her own house. I like that because she understands balance. She understands that there, there has to be a need to bless your own house before you can bless anybody else's. Come with me, men and women of God, because how is it that we can stand before other people, show them how to walk their house, how to heal their marriage, how to be strong in their own selves, and yet we cannot heal our own selves. Deborah understood the balance behind ministry. She said, although I'm booed up, I still understand the balance. She not only has a partnership in matrimony, but it also entails the process of her, of her magistracy the process of her magistracy because she is not only a prophet she's not only a wife but she's also a judge that word judge is what we've been talking about in judge in the book of judges the the judges are simply those who were ordained by god not as a spiritual figure as much as it is a political figure this political figure stands before the people and what they do is they hear the gripes and 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 and, and the uh, issues of man on an everyday basis they have people come to them every day and the text tells us in verses number four and five that people come to Deborah from every which away they she sits up under the palm tree called Deborah and she 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 settles their legal disputes she's a wise judge because she knows that in order to, to interact in the political, she's got to tap into her spirit man. Brothers and sisters, let me help you with something. If you're going to be successful in the carnal realm of life, you've got to learn how to tap into your spiritual. Because people of God, we don't operate in the carnal. We operate in the spirit. Maybe that's why Paul told us to walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But there's one more thing y'all I normally have three but I got four for today because in the in addition to have it to have to talking about her position of ministry and talking about her partnership of matrimony and discussing her process of magistracy we also see the prowess of military look at this brothers and sisters because throughout the Old Testament you never see a woman who has any military intelligentsia not so in this particular case because God has endowed Deborah with some sort of military strategy because in order to deliver the people of God from the enemies of God there has to be some military strategy or some military prowess. The text says brothers and sisters 
that Deborah has some sort of some sort of strategy to get the people of God outside of the hand of their enemy. I like this, brothers and sisters, because now she she gathers around her some capable men to help her get to the place where the people of God are operating in victory. I like this because even though brothers and sisters we tour the text and we see that in the midst of Deborah's excessive assignments she is also confirmed with evident assessments. She's confirmed with evident assessments. My brothers and sisters watch the text for just a moment. As we look in verses number 8 and verse number 9, Deborah herself is somebody who, who, who does not have any military strategy. She does not have any military prowess. But the text says, check this out, the text says unto us that Deborah says to Barak, I need you to get your men, go and make sure that these men are now strategized, ready for victory. That's what the Bible says. I like Barak because Barak says, hold up, Deborah, wait a minute, flag on the plate. I got to tell you something because even though you're the leader, I see something in you that I don't see in myself, which number one makes, gives him a statement of dependence. Do you see it? It's in verse number eight. He says, hold up, where you go, I'm going to go. I can't go nowhere unless you go somewhere because if you don't go, I ain't going. I, got, I know that I have military strategy. I know I have military prowess. I know I have military power, but I'm not going to go nowhere until you go with me. It's, it's one thing, my brothers and sisters, to have some sort of power. It's one thing, brothers and sisters, to have some sort of intellect yourself, but if if, that, if you know that the anointing of God rests on your leadership, then you would understand that there are some things you can't do that your leader has been empowered to do. And I wish some people in the body of Christ would understand that just because you have a certain knack for something doesn't mean you got to go by yourself. But you ought to go under the auspices of the one that's covering you. Deborah said, uh, Barak says, I can't go until you go. And if you don't go, I ain't going. There's a statement of dependence. But that statement of dependence is also complemented with the significance of delegation. Do you see it, my brothers and sisters? B Deborah says to him, all right, I hear what you're saying, Barak. I'm going to go with you. But hold up. Let me show you the delegation of power, the delegation of victory, the delegation of glory. Brothers and sisters, what 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 the Bible is intended to teach us is that even though we go out in the name of the Lord, it is not the cause for us to be seen, but it is the cause for God to be seen. And brothers and sisters, Deborah said to Barak, since you said it this way. The, the victory you're about to obtain will have nothing to do with you. The glory you're about to embark upon will not have your name on the resume. But my brothers and my sisters, what's getting ready to happen is all going to go unto God. Brothers and sisters, do you hear what I'm saying? God is saying unto you and to I that what's getting ready to happen is not going to be man's power. Power. It's not going to be man, woman's power. It's going to be the power of God. That's why Zechariah said it like this. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. I got to get out of here, y'all. You must understand, if you not go do the will of God, the way of God, then don't do it at all. I heard a song the other day, sung by, by, uh, by the lady, Dr. Willie Thorne says, God's way or no way at all. Oh yes, Deborah said to him, uh, Barack, yes, we're going to be able to get the glory. 
glory. But do understand this, that God's not going to give you the credit. Neither is he going to give me the credit, but he's, but he's, he's, he's strong enough to let his enemies know you got to be by girl. Ain't that something? God is not disrespecting the gender of the woman. But what he's saying is in this particular time, women were not on the battlefield. Women were not placed in war. But now Deborah has been put in a place where she's not going to fight, but she's going to lead the fight so that when they see the end of the war, they'll be able to say, how is it that we got beat by a girl? God is saying it's not because of her gender, because God has no respect of person. But the scripture says again, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. So it leads from a significance of delegation. And this significance will be seen in a spectacle of dominion. It'll be seen in a spectacle of, of dominion. Don't you see in verse number 8 and 9 and verse number 10 that, that the word says that Barak begins to get his men and, and Deborah leads the, the, the war. But as they lead, the presence of, of Deborah goes with them. Do you not, do you see it, my brothers and sisters? The, the victory has been won by Deborah saying unto Barak, the Lord has given you the victory. If you don't know when to shout, that was your shout to. Let me try it one more time. Deborah says to Barak that the Lord has given you the victory. You missed the shout to again. God has said, the woman says to the man who's out there on the field that the Lord has already given you the victory. Please don't understand, please don't misunderstand understand this, that throughout the duration of time and in countries near and far, God has always put men and women at different places in warfare. So even though the woman may not be on the battlefield, she, she was still somewhere fighting on behalf of her house. So God says, I've got the woman in one place. I've got the man in one place, but all of them are going to fight to give Give me all the power, all the victory, and all the glory. I got to go, my brothers and sisters. That's one more thing I got, I got to give you. In this particular passage, we see that the children of Israel have routed uh, the people of Sisera. We see that the children of Israel have, 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 have done exactly what the Lord has told them to do. But there's one more thing I like about Deborah, and that thing is Deborah has some exceptional associates. She has some exceptional associates. Where, where are you, Pastor? I'm in verses 17 through 22. Check the text, my brothers and sisters. For in the text, we see something. Deborah has already stepped off the scene. She's allowing Barak and his men to get the glory and the victory, or the victory, not the glory. They've already won. If you read verses 17 through 22, you'll discover, or verse, or verse 18, you'll discover that not one of the remaining Kenites have, have lived up under the sword of Barak. I love this, brothers and sisters. But there was a fellow, uh huh, there's a fellow named Sisera. Sisera decides, well, if everybody else is lost, ain't no sense in me trying to get defeated. I'm not going to die. Today ain't the day for me to die. So Sisera decides he wants to leave from the war front and he goes into another city. But here's what I like is that when you are on the Lord's side, God's got associates in every place. Because when we get to chapter, uh, to, uh, chapter 4, verse number 7, 17. There's a man by the name of Jael, a, a woman, I'm sorry, by the name of Jael. We're not talking much about Jael. Jael was a wife of a particular man named Heber, the Kenite. They, these people, I like them because these associates have a relative connection. What's the relative connection, Pastor? These are descendants of Cain, K-A-I-N. 
not C-A-I-N. What's so special about them? They come, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, from the children of Hobab. Hobab are the, are, are, are the, are the descendants of Moses' brother-in-law. They are kinfolk. So if there's anybody I'm going to look out for, surely I'm going to look out for my kinfolk. The text says I got to go. That, that, that There's some relational connectivity. And brothers and sisters, don't look now. But you'll never know who you're related to. You'll never know who's on the Lord's side unless God shows them to you. Maybe that's why Paul said in the book of 1 Thessalonians, be careful how you entertain angels for some have uh, entertained strangers for some have entertained angels unaware. You never know sometimes the person you are blessing uh, may be somebody that's been sent to bless you. Preach pastor, I got to go now. The text says that with these relative connections comes a rascally commitment. There's a rascally commitment because when Jael sees the presence of of this particular man. She says, come on in. Come on in, my Lord. Come on in, my King. Sit right here. Come into my tent. It wasn't unusual for women to have their own tent. After all, her husband has escaped. He's, he's cut ties with these people. She's in her own tent doing her own thing. She welcomes in this particular man. She says, let me make you at home. Brothers, hear me and hear me well. You got to be careful what woman invites you into her tent. Because every woman who invites you in is not inviting you for the right reason. Go on and preach, Pastor. The Bible says, I like this, y'all, because it says that she makes him feel at home. Read the text when you get a chance. She, he's become so exhausted that now he's laying down on the floor. But watch this. He can't be so hospitable as to just enjoy the hospitality. No, he has to be a commander. Sometimes when you go in other people's houses, you can't make demands because you in trouble. Do you see what happens? He's saying to her, can you please give me some water? Let me show you how, how rascally she is. She heard the command, give me a drink of water. Here's what she did. She gave him some milk. Milk is not as refreshing as water because it was not meant for him to be refreshed. She had another alternative in mind. Please be careful when you ask people for something, but they give you the opposite of what you asked. The man said to her, here he is, giving more commands. He said, now listen, sis, when they come, and you know they're coming, cover me cover me. And when you cover me and they come through, let them know say, hey, uh, he ain't, he, he not here. I, 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 I need you to get something. You gotta be careful, God, who you ask to cover you. Because everybody you ask to cover you, God help me, is not covering you. Some people that you expect to cover you will actually expose you. Preach, Pastor. You got to be careful because you've asked some people to be your friend. You've asked some people to be your associate. You told them your very secrets and the very thing you told them has now been put on social media. Be careful who you ask to cover you. I've got to get out of here now. But the Bible says that in the midst of her rascally commitment, she commences some ruthless creativity. Where are you, pastor? Because the word says that she waits for him to go to sleep. I'm closing my Bible. The word says she waits for him to go to sleep. And when he's comfortable enough, watch this. The Bible says that she gets a tent peg. She gets her a big old nail. And while he's asleep, she takes the nail, put it at the temple of his head, takes a hammer and drives it through his temple. And the Bible says he dies dead. When, when uh, uh, Barak 
at his company. Come looking for him. The woman says, I got who you're looking for. Come see what he looks like. In other words, what God is trying to tell us is, be careful whose house you run into. Be careful who you call your friends. Be careful who you all your partners because everybody that smiles in your face is not your friend but thank God for Deborah Deborah tried to tell us uh, that the Lord can use anybody that he wants to I don't care if you're male or female I don't care if the anointing is on you at a young age or if it's on you at an old age if God be for you who can be against you so pick up your head and put a joy in your heart because the joy of the Lord it is your strength the Lord knows how to use you but you've got to be available and say Lord here am I if the Lord needs somebody here am I send me I'll go thank God for Deborah teaching us today that the Lord can use anybody that he wants to use and I've got a question to anybody watching me right now do you want the Lord to use you well it's real simple all you've got to do is say like Isaiah Lord if you need somebody here use me Lord here's my hands here's my feet here's my eyes I'll do whatever you want me to do and when you use me you ain't got to pay me down here but one of these days I want to hear your voice say servant servant well done you got to be like Deborah and avail yourself, even at, as, a, as a female, even as a young person, you got to avail yourself and say, Lord, if you need somebody, here am I, send me. Sometimes your enemy won't see you coming. I'm done, y'all. Your enemy won't see you coming because He's expecting God to move another way. But God said, no, I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to go this way. Thank God that the enemy makes the mistake of underestimating you. Because he don't think that you got what it takes. But what he don't know is you got more than one hat that you wear. <laughs> There's something different about you that the enemy doesn't understand. That's why God has poured so much. He's, he's deposited, yes Lord. He's invested so much into you. So since he's deposited so much into you, why don't you say yes to his will? I didn't get a chance to preach it, but if you go to Judges chapter five, which is the very next chapter, the Bible says, Deborah and Barak start giving praise unto the Lord. When God has given you the victory, the next thing to do is to give your God the glory. Because he could have used somebody else, but he decided to use you. Is there one who's watching me today who can say, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I want to offer Jesus to you. Is that one today? If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. What do you want him to do? Take my hands and my feet. Touch my heart and speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Come on, let's sing it one more time. I want to offer Jesus to you. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Oh, 
If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. What do you want him to do? Take my hands and my feet. Touch my heart and speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you're watching me today, Jesus Christ died for you that you might live. He gave his life for you. He died on the cross. The Bible says that God commended or demonstrated his love for us. And while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for you. If you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin and rose from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Would you like to accept Jesus Christ today? You got a friend request. Can I tell you that? You got a friend request. The friend request is from Jesus. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will come into me, I'll come into him. You got to open the door. He's not, he's a gentleman. He's not going to open the door. You got to open it for him. You got to say yes. How do I say yes? I want you to pray this prayer with me. And as you pray this prayer, you're opening your heart to God. And God will hear you, receive you, and own you as a child. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you a sinner. I repent of my sin. Come into my life. Save me. I believe in Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He died for my sin and rose from the dead. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me. Guide me. And I will live for you the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I'm excited for you. Because you just made the, the best decision of your life. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, for those of you who, who said I'm already saved. And those of you who just got saved. I have, I have a second invitation. I want to offer you an invitation to be a part of the best church of Baytown. Let me say this, I always give this disclaimer. We're not a perfect church, but we're perfect for you. If it's your desire, if you, you know you need a church home, you're saying, and you're saying to yourself, well, you know what, I'll wait till y'all come back and then I join. No, no, no. Can I be honest with you? I don't know. We don't know when we're coming back. But get in the church now. But come, come in the house now. There are benefits to being in the house now. You need a church fellowship. You need a pastor. The people who've been commenting, they would love to be your brother and sister. And as I often tell you, I'd love to be your pastor. Can I be your pastor? Won't you come? You can come by three ways. You can come by, caught a letter from another church. You can come by Christian experience. That means you've already been saved. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or thirdly, you can come as a candidate for baptism, meaning that you've accepted Jesus Christ, but you've never been baptized in water. I invite you to come. There are several ways you can do so. The information is being put on the screen right now. You can call the church, leave your information. You can also go to the website, leave your information in the contact us page. You can also email us. Give us all your, your name, your number, your address, all your pertinent information. Once we get it, we'll, we will contact you and officially welcome you into the body. If you're on social media, hit us in the inbox or in the DM, whichever your mode of communication. Watch this, we even have a, we, we have a, a process that if this is not the church where you wanna be, we'll send you wherever church you wanna go to. Our job is not competition. Our job is making sure you become the Christian that the Lord wants you to be. Won't you say yes to his will? Amen. I look forward to hearing from you. Listen, if you have not paid your tithes and offerings, today is a good day to do that. On the screen is some information 
where you can pay your tithes and offerings. Please do not bring your tithes to the church campus because the church campus is closed as of this until further notice. But there's information right there where you can send your tithes. You can call, you can text to give. You can also give online. You can mail your tithes and offerings to the church mail address. Or even if you desire to bless the man of God, there's some information on how you can bless the man of God. Whichever way you give, do know this. According to the scripture, he that sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. He who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. As a man has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, neither of necessity. For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. And do know that as you give, God will give it back to you. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself this Lord's Day. I pray that you were blessed. The Lord's will, I'll see you this Wednesday. Or not soon, if not sooner. If this word was a blessing to you, please hit the share button on Facebook, even on YouTube. Spread the word so that the people can be blessed. Some people don't have a church to go to. They don't have a pastor. They don't have a fellowship. You be the evangelist. Evangelist. Notice the play on words. Be the evangelist. Spread the gospel of Jesus Christ so that somebody might be saved. Somebody might, be, might find a place to call their own. Listen, we got to go. Have a great week. The Lord's will. I'll see you next time. Until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance on you and give you his peace. And may he bless you in your uprising, in your downsetting, in your going out, in your coming in, in your labor and in your leisure, until the day when we shall stand at the feet of Jesus, when there will be no sunrise, nor sunset. Love you. We miss you. God bless you. We'll see you next time.